Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, the news is the market. Uh, the market continues to uh, take a little bit of a correction and a dip, but I just want to put some things into perspective and just to talk to you about uh, some sound principles and just ask you the question, what's really changed? So we'll take a look at that. Also, I wanted to uh, reiterate some of the information that I had posted yesterday as far as the three uh, reasons of why the market could potentially have crashed, plus one more that we uh, just found out about. And then finally, I want to talk about some positive news, which is Tether and Bitfinex reaching a settlement uh, with the New York Attorney General and how good that is for the entire market. So we'll take a look at all that. But first, just want to say thank you to our sponsor, CryptoTrader.Tax. If you do not have a uh, tax software, I highly recommend this one. I've been using it for, this will be my second year now. Just got everything wrapped up. Actually, I'm still waiting for Voyager to give me my uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet so I can put it in there, but everything else as far as like API integration has already been done, set, it's really easy. Uh, I have, uh, like I said, used this twice uh, now uh, from the time that uh, I actually signed up, got in the members area, put all my information in last year, took me 30 minutes and it was off to my CPA. Everything was done, saved me a ton of time and a ton of heartache and headache. So if you are looking for that, there's a link in the description below. Also, they are running a promotion. If you just go to uh, this uh, page, which I will link also in the description, uh, that you can just put in your first name and your email and you're entered to win for a $300 value for a, a unlimited tax report. Highly recommended. If you don't want to wait for that, uh, all viewers of Dan get 20% off. So that is what is going on. Thanks so much for Crypto Trader. Really appreciate it as far as the promo. Let's talk about what the heck is going on with the market. So I woke up today and I thought to myself, well, it should probably be a little bit of a better day, but uh, here we are and uh, kind of down below. But I want to take you back not too long ago, maybe three weeks ago, two weeks ago, actually. Remember when Bitcoin was about to bust through 50,000? Everybody was super excited, like, oh, it's going to break through. And it did. And it went to like 52 and then we kind of hovered around there, then 55. Why is it that we look at this and go, this is awful. The, the sky is falling. This will never go back. It doesn't really make sense, does it? If you take a look at this. So like Bitcoin right now is at 47.8. And some people are thinking, well, what's going to happen you know, over the next week or two weeks? Did we already just hit a top? Are we going to go back down? And I have to tell you, I just don't see that happening. I'll explain it a bit. So what else is down? Well, Ethereum is up a little bit, but it's still at 15.64, uh, coming down from a correction of 2,000. Binance coin... Hey, uh, still mag magnificent run 227. But you can see over here on the on the far right hand where it says 24 hour change, we've got a lot of different huge drops. Uh, XRP, watch out, 14% down. Litecoin, 13% down. Chainlink, 12%, 14% low. I mean, everything's down for, uh, if we're looking at like uh, the 24 hour change. Last hour, we're seeing a little bit of gains here and there, but not much. So the question you have to ask yourself then is, is why? What happened? Did, did did something change? Did did uh, did Bitcoin get hacked? Was there a double spend? Was there a huge exchange that just lost all their all their funds? Did Satoshi Nakamoto come out and it was actually Gene Simmons? I mean, who know? There none of this has happened. It's just it's just uh, one of those days. So the question then becomes: Well, why does this happen? And as I've gone through this and I've talked about it before, and I actually talked about it yesterday, uh, I don't really care. I, I don't, I mean, it is concerning that, that the market does go down. And uh, this is why I'm always talking about dollar cost averaging. And when people talk to me and they say, Rob, you don't understand, this, uh, this market is totally different than what, what you went through last time. Sure it is. Sure. There are no more greedy people out there. There are no more people that want to take profits. There are no more people that really don't believe in <laughs> you know, how high this can go and what's going to happen in the future. Or there's uh, people that just want to hold forever. There, you know, there, there either is or isn't uh, more of those people. That's ridiculous. There is still the same people out there and they're still on the same assumptions and the, and, and the same things, even me. So like, you have to understand, as you look at these things and, and, and you talk to yourself, you talk to your friends and, and, and they tell you all the things that are going on, you have to understand, not everybody's like you. Not everybody is just like, hey, you know what? I'm going to hold forever. I learned this lesson the hard way in 2017 when I thought to myself, there is no reason 
why we should go back to cash because I mean the uh, value of the dollar is dropping. So why would people go back to the dollar? Well, guess what they did. And then I thought to myself, well, why would anybody get out of uh, of Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP? Because you know, I mean, those are going to be great for cross border transactions. They're going to save so much money. It's going to be great. And they still did. And then, like, even as the infrastructure was being built, I mean, here we are again, and there's still people who are going to take profits. You have to understand that this isn't uh, a zero-sum game, and there's still going to be a lot of people or whales out there who control a lot of the market. And the problem with whales, because they're, they're still out there, is that you're going to see some big whale dump. And then that whale who just dumped has a buddy whale who's like, hey, what's uh, Pete whale over there doing there? I'm Joe whale. And he dumped. Maybe you know something I don't know. I better dump. And before you know it, uh, Rosie whale, she's like, I got to dump too. Then you got a humpback and you got smaller people. All of a sudden, it's just a big chain effect. And then people start dumping like crazy. There is no reason why it should happen. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you why it happens. I'm just telling you that it does happen. And uh, as time goes on, you know, hopefully there'll be less and less. I mean, the theory is that, hey, there's going to be so many institutions, there's going to be so many Michael Saylors, there's going to be so many uh, you know, entities that are going to put this on their treasury and they're going to hold it. Well, like we talked before, you know, if you're a publicly traded company and you don't own the majority of your shares, you got to answer those shareholders. And right now, right now, I can tell you that uh, uh, Tesla, the shareholders are probably a little bit nervous because they're like, hmm, is this the dump uh, before the all-time highs? <laughs> they're not thinking that. What they're thinking is, what the heck just happened? We just lost 20%. Uh, it just dumped, or 10% or 50%, whatever it was. I, I can't even tell you. Uh, and they're just thinking to themselves, we got to stop this. And then their voices are heard and off you go. So really just take it with a grain of salt and just kind of let it roll off your back. Um, I want you, I want to remind you of the things that I'm doing. I can't tell you what, I, what you should do because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just, you know, some guy who is just a simple investor. That's all I do. I just, I'm just an investor. And I'm going to tell you the same thing I told you. To, I'm going to tell you the same thing today that I told you when I started this channel all the way back in December of 2019. So it's been over a year. Is uh, just dollar cost average. And then also when you see these big dips, um, or I'm going to dollar cost average, excuse me. And then when I see these big dips, I'm going to increase the amount of money that I put in during these dips if I feel that that token is going to uh, go up and not retrace massively uh, during the next big dip of 2022. 20, uh, so that would include projects like Cardano, projects like Polkadot, projects like Voyager, those types of things, you know, that my same portfolio I always talk about. And, uh, and that is it, really. So again, don't be too uh, uh, distraught. This is why I know people talk about, well, just go all in. You can go all in and, and that works out pretty great because right right now, if I was just getting in here and I want to get exposure, I might even think about going all in myself because I'm like, well, because I know what I know and I know where it's going to go. But you have to understand when people are new to this space and they're like, oh, I'm going to put in my 500 bucks. And then all of a sudden they're like, what the heck just happened? Now it's only worth 400 bucks. And to them, that doesn't seem like a legit opportunity because they just lost a ton of money. That's why I'm always like just dollar cost average and it keeps people in here longer so they don't get so scared and they run off. And that's kind of why I think it's a, it's, it's a basic strategy. Now, later on, you can start to value cost average or go all in like my man Diddy did or uh, Alex Becker who's been on the show. Um, but yeah, you can do those things. If, if you're, you know, really got some strong hands and you know, like I'm going in right now and this is the bottom and I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Sure. I'm just saying that uh, there's different uh, different levels to people. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that piece, and uh, let's move on to <laughs> our next little piece that we can talk about. Uh, this was actually from yesterday, and there was three reasons why uh, there was potentially a dip. Uh, one was that uh, F2 pool dip, uh, which was covered by over at George, Cryptos or Us, always interesting guy. And uh, yeah, that happened. I mean, they, they dumped in the market, so sure. Uh, then we had the closing of the uh, Asian market, or opening of the Asian markets, and uh, uh, that was one piece. And then um, there was another piece that, that came about that uh, uh, was kind of was interesting, I would say. Um, well, there was two pieces. One was Elon Musk did a tweet, which I think that is ridiculous to even think about. Maybe a little bit, I guess. But 
Then another one was that uh, Janet Yellen, uh, I think she's the uh, Treasury Secretary, she made some negative comments about Bitcoin and people like, oh, Janet Yellen made some, that's her job. That's her job. She's also said some things that we need to foster cryptocurrency as it will be uh, one of the uh, futures. So when you hear about these things about like a government official says something negative, first of all, read the whole story, watch the whole interview, because I can almost guarantee that a lot of times when they're saying these things, they just cut off a piece and they use that just for hype and clicks and views, which is dumb. So if you ever hear those, try to get the whole story. That's why I always put the, uh, when I actually talk about a story, I put the link of the, where I got the story into the description so you can read it for yourself. And it's just, you know, I think that's just the best bet. Anyhow, uh, these are the three, I guess the four reasons, but again, really just look at the fundamentals. Has anything changed? Has Bitcoin been hacked? Uh, has there been a double spend? Has there, there been another Mt. Gox craziness or whatever? I don't think so. So. Let me just the comments section. And uh, the last thing, let's talk about some good stuff, huh? So Tether and Bitfinex, this is always a big, huge concern by people. I never really got it. I, I kind of got it, but not really. So people were worried that Tether, as they print Tether, they are supposed to back it up with a one US dollar. So for every one Tether that is printed, you're supposed to have one US dollar. And they were saying that that wasn't even remotely possible. And uh, you know they were committing fraud, they were just printing money. Well, the New York State Attorney General uh, you know, went, to, went to task with them and they didn't find anything and they just settled for 18 and a half million. So there, there's a couple caveats here. First of all, <laughs> it's funny. I think it's funny, it goes, we admit to no wrongdoing and we'll pay 18 and a half million to resolve the matter. Which on two levels is like, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, then why don't you just fight it, you know? But here's the thing. I've been through lawsuits and I can just tell you right now, it's way easier just to pay and just go, you know, whatever, just get out of my way so I can get my business done and then let's just go. Because if we go to court, it's going to cost like 10x of this. So whatever, just get out of my, just get out of my, my way. So uh, I can understand why they did it. And people will say, well, if you weren't, you know, if you weren't wrong, then why'd you pay? Because it's just easier that way. And it's just a simple solution. Like, you want to pay? Sure, here's the money. Off I go. So uh, this is going to open things up, uh, especially like with Tether, because you'll see like a lot of minting. I think they just minted a ton <laughs> of Tether right now, which is good for the crypto market. And this will just, you know, catapult us, I think, to the next bull, I mean, throughout the bull run. And that's how I see it. All right. So that's it for today. I know it's a little bit long winded about some different pieces, but again, has there anything changed? Nothing's really changed. If you're going to dollar cost average, I mean, that's on you. I dollar cost average. I increased uh, what I put into, which was today, uh, I put in uh, a Cardano, Polkadot, and Voyager. And I just increased it by 20% of my daily, uh, what I actually put in uh, for each day. So uh, anyhow, that is it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps with the algorithm. If uh, you also consider cons uh, subscribing, because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is all. I will also put up two more videos left and right. Let YouTube do his magic. And that's it. So thanks so much. See you on the next one.